All right, today I want to talk a little bit about cats and O2 sensors. No, not that kind of cat. Not that kind of cat. The kind of cat that's in your car. Well, not on your car, in your car. Anyway, a few weeks ago my check engine light came on. I ran the code with my scan tool. And it said I had a PO2249 two, two, two or something like that, whatever it is. Uh, whatever the Toyota code is for an insufficient catalytic converter. So the first thing you should do when you have an insufficient cat code is to pull your O2 sensors and check them. So before you pull them, you need to be prepared a little bit for what you might find. Uh, the first thing you need to do is make sure you've got some anti-seize so that, the, that some anti-seize sets four O2 sensors so that when you put them back in, if they're still good, they don't they don't seize up on you, you don't get stuck with two O2 sensors you can't get out later on. Um, the second thing you need to do is you need to let your car cool off. You can't be wrenching on a catalytic converter or an exhaust pipe when it's, you know, eight, nine hundred, a thousand degrees. You need to have the correct equipment to pull an O2 sensor. So you're going to need either an O2 sensor socket or a open end wrench that's big enough to fit your O2 sensor. Uh, mine are seven eighths. Uh, there are other sizes. Uh, 7 8 is the most common. Most places if you go and you say, hey, I need a, an O2 sensor wrench or an O2 sensor socket, they're going to hand you a 7 8 So uh, I would double check, make sure that yours is 7 8 but typically if you've already got a 7 8 and open it in a wrench, you're probably going to be okay. Um, but you are going to need some kind of breaker bar to get it off of there. Typically, uh, they're a little, little tough to get off, um, especially on older cars where they've had a lot of heat cooking them on there for a long time and on possibly rust, especially if you uh, live near the ocean or in the east coast. You want to break it loose, you want to pull it out and you want to actually look at the sensor and, uh, and see what the sensor looks like. So um, I'm going to show you some sensors and I'm going to show you what uh, a good indication is of a failed O2 sensor. And I'm also going to show you how to test your O2 sensors to see if they are failing or have failed. So. Let's get to it. Now to test your O2 sensors, what you want to do is you want to take your sensor. If you look at this one, you know, both of my O2 sensors are all gummed up with the white stuff, okay, which means one of them is bad. Uh, it's a good indicator that one of the sensors is bad. Um, it turns out this sensor, the pre-cat sensor with the most goop on it, the most white stuff, is actually not bad yet. It's measuring dead on right in the specs, right where it's supposed to be. But this one is measuring a few ohms lower, and it's amazing the difference only just a few ohms can, can make. Um, so what you want to do is you want to get your multimeter, you want to set it to ohms, and you want to test the two black wires. The two black wires. Those are your heater element in there. Now, if you, if you look at the uh, multimeter, it's going to settle in right at 13.7, okay? 13.6, right in there. Yeah, but if you test the new one, the new O2 sensor, that's 16.5. That's a, that's a 3 ohm difference. Three, three and a third ohm difference. That's enough to cause some issues with your with your vehicle. It's enough to throw your air fuel ratios off. It's enough to cause some of the, this goop, and it's enough to to ruin your catalytic converter. So as it turns out, what I had happen is I had my Bank One Sensor Two O sensor go bad, and my Bank One Sensor Two O two sensor ruined my catalytic converter. If you look in this end of the cat you'll see it doesn't look so bad does it there's a little bit of that residue in there but that would probably burn off once the O2 sensors fixed yeah it's probably going to be tough to see but, you see how you can't see any honeycomb structure in there? That cat is nearly completely clogged. It looks like the 
the exhaust pressure has has created a path around the outside of the honeycomb but uh, as you can see that honeycomb is completely blocked now it's blocked with the same kind of the same kind of residue as has created that that film on the uh, on the O2 sensor and this cat's probably a good candidate to try and clean cleaning it there's I'd say 50 50 60 40 chance that that it would it would uh, regain its ability to catalyze the fuel there's a couple of things that that make that kind of concern me about it though the fact that it's likely created another air path around the outside of the honeycomb structure which means that it's not going to be uh, it's not going to be it's not going to be as efficient as it's designed as it's supposed to be the reason I am not going to try and clean this myself is because that would take me another day of work and then a couple of days to drive around with this cat in the car and see if it throws a code or not and you know those are days I would you know I, I could be working I could be doing other things and my time is more valuable than that now if this cat cost a thousand dollars fifteen hundred bucks I'd probably do it because it'll be worth it but I managed to find the new cat at Napa for 486 bucks plus tax so at that price it's just not worth me spending several days you know cleaning reinstalling the cat seeing if it works then if it's bad I gotta spend another day pulling it back out and replacing it with the one that I've got I've already got in the car I already put the new cat in so I'm, I'm just not gonna bother doing that what I'm going to do is I'm going to do what everybody should do I'm gonna replace both O2 sensors now I know it's pricey um, this one at, at AutoZone is you know, 150 dollars for the for the Denso brand uh, this one is a hundred bucks at AutoZone for the Denso. This is the bank bank one number two sensor. This is the bank one number position one sensor. You see, they look a little bit different. Um, they both do the same, you know, the same basic task, but they measure different. They measure different, um, you know, a different range. Um, so what I would recommend is replace both O2 sensors because generally by the time your cat's gone bad, your O2 sensors are pretty old too and their lifespan is actually supposed to be much shorter than the 11 years that both of these O2 sensors have lasted. Now this is a 2007 Camry Hybrid with 236,000 miles on it. Now, the fact that these O2 sensors lasted this long is, you know, it's great. They're, it's a good quality product and that's why I would say go with Denso. Um, if you want to save some money, I bought my sensors on Amazon. I got this sensor that's $150 at, at uh, AutoZone. It's like 150, 150, 160, somewhere in there. I got it for 100 bucks um, on, actually I got this one on Walmart.com and I got this one on Amazon.com. And I got this one, this is normally 100, 110 bucks at AutoZone. I got this one for $50 shipped, two day shipping on Amazon. Uh, this one was 100 and, like $104 uh, with free two-day shipping on walmart.com. So what I would say is, is replace your O2 sensors. Every, if you replace a care cat, replace your O2 sensors. Um, unless your cat is just, you know, unless you got a brand new cat and the cat was faulty or something like that. But uh, if your O2 sensors are, are, you know, six, seven, eight, 11 years old, replace them. Um, you're going to save yourself the trouble of having to come back and replace them very shortly anyway because chances are that even though this sensor the bank one sensor one sensor is technically still measuring in spec it's probably on its way out anyway especially with all this this extra crap on it you know um, I'm not going to count on it lasting a whole lot longer so after replacing the cat and both O2 sensors my car now charges into the green whereas for the longest time it would only charge into the blue and when I first bought it it would go into the green all the time I could get over 40 miles per gallon on the freeway and um, then all of a sudden it was you know mid 30s and it was low 30s and now lately it was high 20s and the check engine light suddenly came on so um, don't don't wait for those check engine lights if you guys uh, if you drive a, a hybrid a Camry hybrid or a, a, or a Prius 
you know, it's not always the battery. If all of a sudden the battery's not charging fully, sometimes the engine's just got to work so much that the engine can't charge the battery. So the engine's working harder because you got a bad O2 sensor or you got a bad cat. And, and now instead of, uh, instead of that energy going into charging the battery, that energy, energy, energy is going into charge to, 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 to drive in your car. So what I would say is, uh, you know, check your O2 sensors, make sure that they're, that they're in spec. You know, a lot of times you don't even got to unplug them. Just let the car cool down, uh, or you don't even got to unscrew them. Just let the car cool down, unplug it from the, um, from the dongle and, you know, wait till the cat's completely cool because a warm, a warm car will give you a higher resistance reading. Um, so wait till the car is completely cool. Unplug it. Check your heater. Uh, check the heat wires, the heater wires on the uh, on it, and see if they're in, in spec. Um, sometimes a cat can a, a, an O2 sensor can still measure in spec, but can actually be what's called lazy, where it doesn't respond quickly. Uh, they can still be bad. Um, so you know, have them you know get a scan tool and check and make sure that they're that they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. Um, if you're not, you know, if you're not familiar enough with a car to do that, you can always take it to a shop and have them check them. But at the price you're going to pay to have them check them, it's probably uh, cost you the same amount or even be cheaper to just replace them. So, I mean, if you've got a, uh, over 100,000 miles on your car and all of a sudden now it's the gas mileage sucks, it doesn't got any power. You know, my car with the bad cat uh, had begun lunging. It would be lungy on the freeway. If I'm trying to accelerate, it would be, you know, it would, you, know, you could feel it push and let off, push and let off like it was fighting. So uh, instant, instant, massive improvement. Uh, the, the lunginess is gone. Um, the, the battery's charged into the green. I would bet that my next tank of gas, I'm averaging between 35 and 40 miles per gallon again, just like I did when I first bought the car. So thank you very much for watching. Like, subscribe. Let's do it again sometime. Thank you.